Hey, good morning. Hi, welcome to the second annual Chinette blog out. I'm Leslie Marshall and I work for the digital agency representing Chinette and with me is Julie Stetzer. Um, she works as Chinette as the director of Branded Plastic. So welcome. And also with us today we have Lindy Hawes of Love the Day and uh, Mariah Leeson of Giggles Galore. Um, both have, have been working with us for many years and we're excited to have them. Hi, we're happy welcome. to be here. Thanks for joining us today. Yes. Also, I'm going to be dishing about influencer relations, um, sharing a little bit about the Chinette brand. I know many of you that are tuned in have worked with us before, um, but some of you are new, and we're excited to share our story and let us know or let you know how you can partner with us in 2017. So, um, for those of you who are new, we just wanted to take the time to share a little bit about Chinette and um, our brand heritage and. Um, share a little bit of that story. So, Julie, do you mind? No, no, no not at all. Um, we're actually owned by a Finnish company. It's called Hutamaki, although it does sound Japanese. It's actually Finnish. <laughs> um, our U.S. headquarters is in, in outside of Kansas City, but we have 17 facilities in U.S. in the U.S. We're bigger than just China. We make um, the Chipotle Bowl. If you go there, that's us. We make... Um, ice cream containers and McDonald's fry cartons. And so we do a lot of different things, but what we, um, what I'm in charge of is the Chinette brand. And actually we made the first, the first plate we made in Waterville, Maine in 1903. Um, <laughs> oddly, a again, long it's, a long, it's a long time ago. I was barely born, but um, <laughs> now, now um, uh, but we started manufacturing it in the thirties. Um, and then in the 1970s, um, we we decided, and and we have a way of which we can take the scrap from all of the other products that we make, like the ice cream containers and everything else, and um, we grind make China molded fiber plates. So if you've ever felt them, they're they're not. Oops, the, that's just the way that it is. But it's a hundred percent pre-consumer recycled materials. So we, all of our facilities. Um, it's actually pretty cool. It's sucked up into the it's into a rail car and we ship it off to our other facilities. So we're really a green um, sustainable company. And we're just now sort of tapping our green. We make classic white you know, the classic white plates. Yeah, it's a square. Well, this is our square, but we've got brown, we've got platter dinner, dessert, lunch, and then I came out with this square plate because um, there's just really not a lot of news in this category. And we did some consumer testing that said that um, the millennials were the And now everybody wants to We just had this nine ounce cup. That was our first, and now we have a 14. Um, and then we have our plates. We have um, dinner and dessert. It's doing very well. That, that was an extension for us. We're lucky that we have the Heritage Classic um, name because it sort of gave the consumer permission to go ahead and try to. Um, we came out with a wine glass. Is a I'm drinking water out of it. So. <laughs> it's, it's a little too early. To it. <laughs> First disposable uh, wine glass at grocery stores. Very difficult to take, but um, it's, it's in logical extension. And then the last thing we introduced was our crystal cup story. And Walmart is now carrying this, so you can go. <laughs> and a little plug. Um, yeah, a little plug. Oh, a lot of places carry it. But the interesting thing about this is we make beef jerky containers, and we also make the Gatorade containers for the 
And I was given the task to introduce cutlery. If you go to the store, there's so cutlery. So I thought, what can I do different? Because our cutlery looks similar to everybody else. Hey there. I'm not sure if we're still live or if we've, it looks like we've lost Trinette. Mariah, are you, can you see him? No, I can't see him either. I'm not sure. And my um, computer, my battery is about to die. So I'm going to go run and get the cord real quick um, until we figure out where they are. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I can talk about my experience with Trinette. I don't know where they went, but I've been working with them for about four years. Um, they approached me a couple years ago and I've had a great experience ever since I've been using their products for years and the brand collaboration has been fantastic. Um, I love their products cause I not only use them in my tablescapes, but I also use them just as in party crafts. Um, a couple years ago I did a watermelon party and I just turned the classic white plate into a watermelon and, and it, a watermelon purse and it was a huge hit. So, oh, it looks like they're joining us back. We're back. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> We're back. Apologize for the technical difficulties. We saw that you guys had been commenting that there were some shortages and bad connections. So, uh, you know, you can never prepare for those. No, but yeah. um, we're back, and hopefully you guys are able to um, – to see us and hear us better. Um, if you guys are still having issues, please comment and we'll try to uh, work through it. Um, when you're live, you can never prepare for those right. sort of things. So. <laughs> yeah, so we are back. Um, oh, yeah, so uh, um, I think I left off with cutlery. So yes. we make this, um, I, uh, we make the Gatorade container and we make beef jerky containers and I thought, what can we do differently? So we took the same technology and created this, which is a two-piece, um, and it's really so you can serve and store in it, because once you open up cutleries in those boxes and try to shove it back in, so, so I did it for two reasons. One, it needed to stand out on the shelf, and then the second reason was for storage, actually three reasons, and then the third was that, you know how sometimes you have to lift, like put them in your hand and touch them? I'm a bit of a germaphobe, so I just wanted you to be able to lift out the one that you needed and not uh, contaminate the rest of them. So this has done very well for us. It's, it's probably one of our more successful product launches. Yeah. Primarily because it was it was a natural extension to the to the uh, cut crystal line, so now it's the only um, widely available line of disposable tableware that has everything from wine glass to, to two different wine, um, sizes of cups to two plates, and now the cutlery. Yeah, and what's really great about the cut crystal line is um, you know with the holidays coming up, it's perfect for entertaining, um, especially. Uh, if you're hosting a party with a large number of people attending, mm -hmm. um, it, it really was uh, created to help simplify and make entertaining uh, more convenient and easy for the hostess. So, yeah, and uh, elegant. And elegant, yeah. 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 Um, and so for those of you who were at Snap Conference, I know there's quite a few of you who are tuning in. Um, this is the line that we used for the dinner the, the first night that we hosted. Um, and so... Uh, you know, I think one of the other things to point out is that, you know, we're able to customize it and make it um, your event. Um, we mm -hmm. had little placemats, um, the cutlery, we uh, spray painted the handle. So uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can really make this line your own um, to fit whatever entertaining need that you have. Yeah, we, I, we actually got an email like two days ago from somebody who saw our ad in Real Simple. Oh, yeah. And we, we strung lights mm -hmm. in, in those and they were requesting step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. So um, 
while these are your typical wine glasses, you can they make excellent parfaits as well. Yeah. Like for a brunch, I make parfaits in mine or desserts, whatever. So, yeah. and we actually had a request to kind of show the products again because the connection is bad. Oh, sure. Um, so uh, the plates. We'll start out with these are the cut crystal plates. This is the um, dessert plate. Mm -hmm. Updated packaging just to let the consumer know to look for matching cups and plates because that's important. Yeah. Because um, typically they lay down like this and you can't really see them. That's the dinner plate. And then we have a nine ounce um, cup and then we have a 14 ounce cup. Probably more suited for water or iced tea yeah. if you were having a party. And then we have the cutlery. Mm -hmm. Which I remember that one. And then we have um, the wine glass, yep. which in retail comes in um, eight. Count of eight, but at club it's twenty four or thirty six. Yeah, yeah. And you were talking about earlier the lights, and I know that Lindy mm -hmm. um, and Mariah have both done projects with it. Um, the one that's coming to mind, Lindy, is the one where you uh, created the string of lights. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to share kind of how um, each of you use the products, and um, you know, for your own entertaining, but also for maybe crafts or multiple uses. Sure, I can go ahead and do it. Um, I talked a little bit about it when you guys were off, but um, I am a sorry. I'm a fan of the classic white. Like I'm a classic mm -hmm. white girl. I love it. Um, I have a huge family. Like Christmas is like 45 to 50 people, and mm -hmm. we're doing dishes a lot. So, but I still wanted to look elegant and classy, and so I love the classic white because you can layer it with other colors. It can match any scheme, um, but it still gives it the upscale look. And then they're perfect for crafting, like kids crafts, party crafts. I was talking about my watermelon purse, which still is like a huge traffic driver on my blog. Um, it's like the perfect material. Paints yeah. will on those plates. <laughs> awesome. And for those of you who are tuning in, um, the watermelon purses and the lights, we'll comment um, below and link to those so you guys can kind of see um, how they each use them, uh, either on our site or on their blog. So. Awesome. Mariah, do you have um, a favorite product line, I guess? Yeah, so mine would actually be the cut crystals. So um, I like to, like Lindy said, she uses the classic white to personalize it. And I find that with the cut crystal, I can do a lot of things. I can layer scrapbook paper underneath of it so that it can show through and it can be custom to what I'm working on. I use vinyl a lot of times actually on my plates too so that I can um, have the top plates decorative, but the plate below it um, you can use to eat on, things like that. It just, again, is a way to personalize things. Um, but I think the cut crystal can both be elegant and it can be used in casual situations as well. So that's probably one of my go-tos. Awesome. Yeah. And I think the one product line that we haven't touched right. on yet is the Comfort Cup. Mm -hmm. And this is our new design. Um, you guys should be receiving, for those who RSVP'd, um, we have shipped out product for you guys. So you guys can test the, the new design. Um, but yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to share a little bit about sure. the Comfort Cup line. Yeah. Right. So this Happy. is um, our Comfort Cup. It's a three triple layer cup. So it's the cup, and then there's a layer of foam, and then this outside mm -hmm. layer. So it's designed to keep your drink very hot or cold, and your hands not. So, <laughs> um, so we changed the design yeah. this year, which is always um, it's always pretty nerve wracking because um, you have to. This is a little inside baseball. Yeah. I mean, you have to to consumer test these designs because if it was just left up to me picking one. I would pick what I personally like, not necessarily what the consumer likes. And so, um, so we put that to test with consumers, and this was the number one option. Um, we'll probably change it maybe twice a year at most, um, although Sam's changes their design. We change it for them three to four times a year. So there's yeah. a little bit more seasonal focus. So you have to be, it has to be gender neutral and season neutral. But I use mine um, for a protein smoothie every day yeah. uh, for work. So I just yeah. make it at home and, and, and bring it with me. So while primarily it's for hot drinks, um, it can also certainly be used for cold drinks Yeah, as well. and I've used it for oatmeal too. Um, oh, yeah, hot water right. off at our um, office. So you can, if you have instant oatmeal, you can whip it up and it keeps it warm. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we, a couple of years ago, we were, were with Entertainment Weekly, and we were one of the sponsors at, at the Sundance Film Festival, and we, they served soup in that. Yeah. So you can just walk around and, and drink the soup. So there's a lot of different uh, usages for that, um, but, and that's really literally almost everywhere, including um, 
Yeah, everywhere. Club, Walmart, pretty mm -hmm. much everywhere. Yeah, and it comes in, um, they're 16 ounce cups, mm -hmm. right? And they come in a 20 count pack, typically? Um, yeah, so there's 16 ounce cups, they come in a 20 pack at Kroger, Safeway, Walmart. And then at Club, at Costco, it is a 50 count, and at Sam's, it's a 60. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, we actually did have a question uh, mm -hmm. from one of our viewers asking about uh, the Cut Crystal um, product line. So going back to that, um, would you ever consider releasing a product line without the ridges? Um, what is is that a design that's ingrained in the product line? It is. Um, maybe just share a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, it, it is. When we first came out with it in the cup, um, we wanted to make it a little bit more elegant. So we have a swirl, and that swirl is actually trademarked. So, yes. I mean, it is ingrained with, with yeah. um, Cut Crystal and what it is. Um, we may at some point change it. It's, it's, um, we like it. It's subtle. It's mm -hmm. elegant. But it's also on the practical side extremely expensive to change. So yes. if we were going to private, we've had a lot of people ask us to private label it, uh -huh. um, but we we can't. And well, we can, but it, it's mm -hmm. very expensive. So really, that swirl is so ingrained in what cut crystal is. It's what separates it from, you know, the clay, the clear cups that are on mm -hmm. um, the shelf it's next to it. So it's yeah, it, it differentiates. So I don't think we'll be changing that anytime yeah. soon. Awesome. And then the one last point that I really wanted to touch on that kind of ties all of these product lines together and is part of, um, it's it's really part of the China brand is that most of our products are, are made in the USA. Correct. Um, they're American made. And uh, Hudamaki actually just expanded. Um, they'll be opening a new uh, facility mm -hmm. in Goodyear, Arizona. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to share a little bit about that and you know yeah. why it's important for China to, to be American made. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said earlier, we are an international company, so um, we we have the capability to produce outside of the U.S., mm -hmm. but but choose not to. So we um, the only thing that's made outside of the U.S. is some of our cutlery, and that's made in uh, our facility in Mexico City. Um, but you know, we have 17 now, 18 plants. We employ. It's like 4,200 people in the U.S. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So it, 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 we're a little company that no one's probably ever – I mean, the Hudamaki, the, the brand name, um, yeah. the company brand is, is um, a, a lot larger than just the Chinette brand. So um, it's important that we, that we make it in the U.S. It's, it's, um, it, it helps us be sustainable. It helps you with tracking. Um, if something were to go wrong with a recall or whatever, you know, you're yeah. really going to struggle if you're if you're having it made overseas and trying to figure out what plant that came <laughs> from. I mean, it's true. Yeah. And then it's also speed to market. Um, our cutlery used to be made at at one of our plants in China, but it it takes 40 days to get it from wow from that's, port to port, and then it still has to get to our facilities. And so we couldn't really react very quickly mm -hmm. if some if a large customer came in and wanted some products. So. We moved that operation down to Mexico when we cut the lead time down to just seven days. So from 40 days to 70 days. And also a much, much better um, carbon footprint than, yes. than having it um, come across um, the ocean. So that's that's why we did it. And this is a, our expansion into um, Phoenix is interesting because it's going to help us ship um, to uh, the West Coast. Because uh, primarily we're, we're focused in um, the Northeast or Southeast and the Midwest, and mm -hmm. so this is really our first um, expansion out to the West Coast, but definitely need it because a lot of customers um, yeah. are out there, and then that reduces their carbon footprint as well. Yeah, that's awesome, and you know, there's, I think there's so many good things that come with being American made, like you said, carbon footprint, sustainability, mm -hmm. so um, those are just some of the, the, the principles of the company, and, and that's kind of what sets China apart, I think, from yeah. a lot of its competitors. Yeah, so awesome. Well, that's enough for our shop talk. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, we just wanted to to give you guys a little insight into the China brand, um, and and let you learn about you know what, like we said, our principles and and our products. Um, but uh, I know many of you came to hear about kind of what we like to do with influencers, mm -hmm. our influencer relation process, um, and hear how we work with them. Um, so. You know, we have been working with influencers for quite a few years now. I think Lindy and Mariah have been with us since you know, kind of the beginning of of blogging. Um, but we've really expanded into um, into a couple different uh, sectors. 
Uh, we still maintain organic relationships, so um, working one-on-one -on -one with influencers. Um, as part of our paid media campaigns, a lot of times we work with um, different networks. Um, so there are a lot of different opportunities to partner with us, um, whether it's a product review or if it's creating content. Um, you know, we are open to all of it. Um, you know, I, I think video is something that we're always looking for mm -hmm. too um, now, just because uh, I mean, I think everyone is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, the video marketing was, um, you know, the the top thing in 2016, and it's probably not going to go away in 2017. So we are always excited to explore these opportunities, and we really value what influencers bring to the table. Um, we did a few Nielsen research studies a while ago, and influencer mm -hmm. relations proved to be very. Um, helpful and successful in moving yes. the needle for us. Um, so that is why we're eager and happy to kind of keep moving down that path um, because we do see the value um, in what it brings to uh, the overall brand. So with that, I just wanted to um, share a little bit about what we're looking for in 2017 and kind of our priority holidays. Um, so we are looking, like I said, for anything from a product review um, to creating content, whether it's an entertaining scene or a party DIY, um, and a weeknight recipe. Uh, you know, we cover a broad spectrum of entertaining occasions. Um, like we said, you know, we can go from a very aspirational end, um, you know, with elegant um, party settings with cut crystal, um, hosting for the holidays, to um, you know, getting the dinner on the table on a Monday night mm -hmm. after a busy day at work, um, and so we will really cover that spectrum of uh, aspirational to casual. Um, and so, with that, I would say our main holidays that we look to really create content for would be um, Easter. Mm -hmm. That's a very big time for us. Um, summer barbecue. Um, is another time, you know, so 4th of July, um, you know, Memorial, out, Day. Memorial Day, Labor Day, um, that whole season. Uh, and then Thanksgiving and Christmas, so the Q4 holidays um, are also another big time. And those really support both the classic white and Cut Crystal product lines. Yeah. And, and I'd also say for Cut Crystal, it would be the moms, dads, and grads. Mm -hmm. And it's great for a shower. Yes. Maybe shower, wedding shower. And we're seeing a lot of it at, as the DIY bride mm -hmm. and the Pinterest bride um, grows. So do we see a lot of usage at, for, at receptions for, for the Cut Crystal. So that's got a little bit more of a... Um, upscale entertaining focus or a cocktail party we're seeing a lot of people use it for or classic white is just awesome for your holidays it's, it's you know designed to be sturdy and have heavier meals on it a lot um, of mashed potatoes yeah, a lot of mashed potatoes so um so yeah so so they we follow the same cup crystal likes the yeah. same, obviously the same holidays as, as does well for for um classic white but i'd say the moms dads and grads and then i'd also say that um, you know, our retailers are always asking us for content. And so it could be content that would eventually end up on a Sam's or, or BJ's or Walmart. Um, we're one of the few people in the disposable tableware that are doing it, is doing anything. We relaunched our website this year mm -hmm. to make it more mobile friendly and also a little bit easier to, to shop as well because um, we have a store located on there. But, you know, we're always looking for recipes or I just entertaining ideas and, mm -hmm. and we're finding that our retailers are really hungry for that and so they're coming to us to ask us hey can we get some recipes from you can you do a video for us us to just shot a video that'll <laughs> end up on bjs.com for some cranberry Moscow mule but it's a great cocktail it is a great cocktail <laughs> but they were thrilled with that so that's the kind of that's the kind of content that that does very well for for us and then also for our end consumer and the retailer as well. So, And I think the great thing about that is Chinette is in so many um, different retailers from grocery to club mm -hmm. um, and, you know, across the U.S. So there are a lot of opportunities for us to identify bloggers that, you know, are, are truly shoppers at Publix or, you know, are mm -hmm. Costco shoppers. Um, shop at hy -Vee if you're in the Midwest or Safeway. So I think that that is something that we'll be exploring. And, you know, I'd love to hear from uh, from each of you if you have any connections to retailers or if that's something that interests you because um, we're always looking for content, like Julie said. Yeah, I mean, one thing that, that's kind of different I see from the next, in the next 
couple of years, and it's probably started about two years ago, is sort of getting away from the very traditional coupon that's dropped in the, in the paper, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're FSIs, they're called freestanding inserts. Um, a lot of major companies have gone away from that and put their money into the digital space, which is what we've chosen to do as well. We'll still be doing um, traditional uh, TV and print next year, actually some great new spots, so keep an eye out for those, but, but really because digital you can move so quickly and have a lot more content readily available, that's really where we're focusing on. Yeah, that's great. Um, we had a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, Super Bowl is also on our radar. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention that before. Uh, that is an area that we are testing this mm -hmm. year. Um, and I think along with that, possibly um, depending on what that turns out to be, looking at tailgating as well, um, knowing that there are opportunities as those are kind of growing, entertaining sectors. So yes, um, we will be looking uh, at different ways to support that holiday. Um, and also with that lead time for content, um, I know everyone is different and has their own schedule. Um, you know, I think at the, it would be a month in advance is kind of what we're working towards or a few months ideally. Um, so then that way we can look at how can we cross promote that content um, on our website, on our blog, on our social channels. Um, we have an email database, um, Club Chinette, uh, where we send out monthly uh, e-newsletters that feature different content um, and uh, coupons and different types of promotions that we have going on. So that's another opportunity to reach a uh, large Very following. Large. Um, I think we're, we're close to 500,000. Um, mm -hmm. I need to double check my no, numbers. No, actually on that. we're over 500,000. We're 000. over 500,000. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to yeah. oversell. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's just another great way to, to reach consumers. Um, Lindy and Mariah, do you guys want to share a little bit about the, the holidays? I know you, you said earlier, um, shared kind of the different products that you prefer using. But just um, share a little insight into how you've previously used the content um, and, you know, what holidays that you, you see different products working well for. Sure. Um, I know that I have used um, the products quite a bit for football and tailgating, actually. So it's interesting that you say it's one of the newer things that you guys are trying out. Because I've had some um, some of the things I've done for you in the past have been really successful. Um, I've done um, a kind of just fruit or veggie cup, but attach a yeah. little football whistle to it. Um, but it's easy. It's fun. It's when you're out tailgating um, or when you're you know at the game. Um, or even if you're at home, the kids can play with the whistles. They love those. Um, but then you are also got the kind of grab-and-go concepts. Like, I'm really big into that because usually when we are entertaining, people are moving around. No one's really sitting. You're in and out. So I want for things to be convenient and easy for people, which is why I like using the cups um, for serving vessels that are, you know, so you don't have to pile things on a plate. You can grab a parfait and, you know, eat it while you're watching the game or mingling and talking. Yeah. Um, so I like the convenience factor of those things, but like I said, I use it for almost all of my holidays, lots of crafts. Um, I actually have a party set up right now. I wish I could show you um, that I've got the cu um, cups on for a holiday open house that we're going to be doing where people can kind of come and go. Um, we know the holidays are busy. We want people to come and hang out with us and, you know, our family, but come and go. So we've got a little dessert table and drink bar and things like that. So those are things that I like to do. I like to entertain a lot, so I use the products a lot. <laughs> That's great. And I um, I know for me, my the content that does the best, my Trinet content that does the best is the content that's just really easy and practical. And they always revolve around the holidays as well because a lot of people are entertaining. So my 4th of July content with Trinet always does really well and Halloween and Christmas. Because um, people just want really practical, easy ways, like Mariah's cute little cup with a whistle around it. They want easy ways to spruce up their products that they're already using. So that's the content for me that does the best. Yeah, that's great. And I think that that really aligns with um, kind of the brand value of China is mm -hmm. making it easy for people to get together. Um, you know, in today's world, people don't have a lot of time to host, uh, you know, five course sit down, you know, dinner. So uh, how can we make it easy for people to get together and spend that quality time together without having all that hassle? So that's great. So um, I think we've had a few questions come in. Um, 
So the first one was, are you looking for content for China at blog or are you looking for sponsored content on other blogs? And I think the answer to that is both. Um, we will be having an ambassador program in 2017 where uh, bloggers will be posting on our website directly. Um, Lindy and Mariah are, are going to be a part of that program and we're excited for them to join. Um, mm -hmm. But we are always looking for people to share their thoughts and opinions and their content on their own properties. Um, you know, we always want to make sure that the partnership is mutually beneficial um, because I think that's when um, partnerships are the strongest. Uh, we see results um, for web traffic and for brand advocacy. So, you know, I think that there's a lot of different opportunities that we are willing to explore. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, and, and I would just add that that um, I would strive for it to be authentic. Absolutely. Not feel forced at mm -hmm. all. So fortunately, we, we're, we have a product line that is pretty authentic yes. to entertaining. So I think that's important. Absolutely. Um, okay, there, the questions are coming in. This is great. Um, mm -hmm. Keep them coming. So are you still looking for content now or just in 2017? Mm -hmm. um, I know that the holiday season is quickly approaching and like you said this product line is great for it we would definitely be open to looking at different ways but on it but um being cognizant of those lead times so um if you do have an idea for the holiday season feel free to send us an email i'll be providing um contact information uh for our team so you can reach out and pitch those ideas and i would definitely also say super bowl i know somebody yes. asked about that um we are going to be testing super bowl um with um digital like banner yes. ads on ESPN and, and other things but we're also partnering with some specific key retailers um, around in the US about um, Super Bowl so yes there might be some opportunities there as well awesome so more okay more. so how to get in touch for collaborations um, I, I said that before I'll put my email address um, in the comments and we'll send we'll be sending out a follow-up email as well um, so that you guys uh, can share your thoughts about the um, about the hangout, but you know, like I said, share any ideas that you might have for the brand, um, and kind of start that initial conversation. Um, if you're curious right now, it's l marshall at mbbagency.com. Again, we'll be posting that in the comments. Um, yeah. So, man, they keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Um, so. I really wanted to kind of switch gears now and talk about just trends that we're seeing with influencers, um, get some thoughts uh, from Lindy and Mariah on kind of where they've seen the blogosphere head. I know that they've been um, in it for a while. Um, you know, they started at when it was uh, not really a thing and now it's a <laughs> big booming sure. business. So, uh, you know, I, I would love for them to kind of share their thoughts on, um, you know, how has it changed? How has it stayed the same? Where do you guys see it heading? Um, for me, I've noticed this past year that, um, like you've noticed, brands are seeing how valuable content is on their own site. And I've seen a lot of brands really wanting to explore that avenue and create content, and in doing so, getting influencers um, and ambassadors to create that content for them because they've realized how powerful and how much traffic and traction and interaction that can bring. Um, so I think we'll continue to see more content from influencers on brand sites. Um, so that's one of the things I've seen this last year. What about you, Maria? Yeah, I would echo that as well. I think one of the things that I've really noticed that changed um, over the years that I've been doing this is when you first started out, you used to work with maybe a lot of different companies and you may only work with that company one time, maybe twice. But now I'm seeing that those companies are coming back and wanting to work with you repeatedly because they see the value in that partnership and know that you've made a connection with your readers. You're authentic. The, the, I know that word gets used a lot, like be authentic, but it's so true. Like if you don't truly love the product and you don't really stand behind it, the brand and eventually the people that you're trying to promote this product to can see that. So I think that's one of the reasons why these partnerships are becoming more in depth and they're really looking for longer um, contracts or longer opportunities to work together so that they can build relationships and rapport on both sides through the brand, through the blogger and come together and make this community that people are really want to be a part of. Yeah, that's great. And I, I think it's, Funny, I was talking with a colleague the other day about how there's a, 
a boomerang effect because influencers really started out as just authentically sharing, you know, products that they loved or, you know, brands that they loved. And, and now it's kind of coming full circle with that. They're coming back to, like you said, um, building those relationships and making them deeper and stronger and, you know, extending that to create that community. So, um, yeah, I think that's very interesting. We just got another question. Oh, we did. Okay. Um, okay. So what kind of content performs best and resonates most with buyers? So I'm assuming the China shoppers. Um, parties, tablescapes, crafts, and recipes. Um, I would say just from our uh, – uh, we see, you know, entertaining scenes and parties and mm -hmm. recipes do well. Uh, I think – crafts, there's a place for crafts. Um, I don't think it's the, the top content performer that really helps move the needle for us. Um, but I do think that, you know, if you would identify, uh, you know, painting the handle of, uh, of the cutlery to go into a table setting as a craft, those things um, really align or um, more functional. So using the cut crystal cups or wine glasses, as a canister to put paint in if you're doing a craft with kids. So I think those are some of the things that we've seen mm -hmm. help. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts. Well, um, no, I think recipes, um, attainable, entertaining tips, mm -hmm. um, and napkin folds. Yes, napkin They're folds extremely are extremely popular for us. Insanely popular. We, so. nap we make napkins, um, but we have, like, that's like the second most visited. Yeah, we have a bunny website. napkin fold. I would I recommend checking it out. It's, um, pretty popular around yeah. Easter. So yeah, very. If you're looking at dressing up your table, yeah. check out the bunny napkin bowl. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are just some of the things. Um, so I, yeah, I would say if we had to rank them, um, you know, the, the entertaining scenes and then recipes and then crafts. Yes. So Awesome. So switching gears back to kind of some of the trends that we've been seeing. Um, oh, Lindy and Mariah, what have you guys learned um, in your years of doing this that really make a brand partnership successful? I like it. I think, again, it kind of just goes back to that, that rapport and that relationship. Um, I know that being able to communicate with the brand directly is a big thing, like not having to work through for other people to get to the person who you really need to be talking to and a big game changer for me. Um, and I think um, seeing again, it's really coming back to that partnership. So it used to be that as an influencer, we do a lot of the promoting on our blogs and our social media, but now the brands are saying, we want to promote you and your content on our sites as well. We want to put some at Facebook ads behind this, or we want to, you know, hire you to do a video for our brand Facebook page. So I think it's just that it's really becoming back to where we're all intertwining and weaving together to feel, form a really strong partnership and relationship instead of it being like you were each doing our own thing we're now trying to come to the middle yeah no I totally agree and I also think that um like she said communication is key and honesty like if something's not working for the brand like I want them to be honest with me and tell me like oh look this this isn't working can we tweak this and then if something's not working for me I mean just having that relationship where with people to be open and honest about things that are working so that the content performs really well um, and that the really and then the relationship just continues to grow organically and um, things it, it works it, I don't know just works out <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, and I think especially, like you mentioned, you see the shift of people wanting um, or brands wanting uh, more content to live on their site. Mm -hmm. um, do you see a challenge in maintaining your, when you're creating that content or that, that copy, do you see a challenge in maintaining your own voice while still representing the brand? How do you guys um, balance those two needs? Um, Go for it. I think, I think um, for me, I still feel like the reason the brand has come to you and hired you in the first place is because of who you are, because you can connect with your readers. And so they want for that to show through as well as, you know, um, but if you're being authentic to who you are, and again, if you're not using the product, you don't love it, and you don't really know much about it, then you're never going to come across as being someone who's a great ambassador or a great person to talk about that. But like, I know that you can come look in my cabinets right now. We eat off of China every single day because I don't like 
like to do dishes, you know? <laughs> so I, I'm a great person to, you know, be an advocate for you because I truly love it. I use it. I believe in it. It's a product that changes my life. So I don't think it's hard for me to um, maintain that authentic, authentic voice on the brand site. It's just making sure that you are, you know, I think the brand, they, you've got a whole team of sales and marketing. You don't need me necessarily to sell it with the marketing genre. You want me to sell it with Mariah's voice and Mariah's way of thinking because I'm going to connect to the mom who doesn't like to do dishes. <laughs> and we have quite a few of those in our consumer base. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. And I think, I mean, I wouldn't put any any of my content on other brands' blog that I wouldn't put on my own blog. Uh, so I just, and I never push it. Like, if, if I have to, like, really brainstorm and really, like, it's really hard to create the content, then I wait it out until it's something that I, I would naturally do on my own site. I never try to push an idea. Yeah, that's, that's great. Good feedback. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I know that you two have both been um, experimenting with Facebook Live. Um, so there have been a lot of changes in social media over the past year. I mean, it's crazy to think that 2014, it was like eons ago in digital years. Um, you know, and it's no longer just Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. It's Pinterest and, you know, Facebook Live and all of these other social extensions. How do you guys manage all of them and find out, you know, where your consumers are, and then how do you relate that to the brand um, and, and kind of package it all together with a nice bow? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> um, I know, I have a lot of questions <laughs> on that one. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a lot of questions to get out. <laughs> Leslie, okay, so for me, um, I really resonate. I, I try to stick to the social media platforms that my, my audience is really engaged with. So, like, I have a really engaged – Instagram feed and a really engaged Pinterest feed Facebook uh, not as much but and snapchat I do so I, I really try to stay um, engaged in those platforms more than the other platforms um, and then I think live is something that's really big right now people want to see it happening real time and they want to like really get to know the personalities behind these brands and these relationships and so um, I think we just keep moving forward, and it's ner it makes me nervous, but you just keep going, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I would, um, I'm a little different than Lindy, and, like, I love video. Like, I love it. Um, <laughs> and I really enjoy doing the Facebook Lives. I think, too, when I do, I notice that my audience, um, I start to see a lot more engagement on my end as well because they're like, oh, that, you know, I, I talk a lot. For example, I talk a lot of times about how easy things are because I believe in simplicity. But people on a blog post will maybe write, like, I don't think it's as easy as you make it sound. But when I do it on a Facebook Live video and I can do the project in five minutes, then you know I'm telling you the truth. It's easy. <laughs> do it. Anyone can make it. So I think it just adds that extra layer of like connecting to the people that you're trying to, to become and build a community with. And, um, you know, we all want that. We all want to feel connected in some way. And so if I can offer that up by doing video and talking, um, on online to people about my life and how things work for me and how it, you know, you can do it too. I think people really resonate with that. Yeah. I yeah. think I think people love transparency, sorry, and that's why live is resonating so well with the world is that, I mean, you can't fake, you fake yourself on a video, like it's, it's We're it's, learning that right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> As you can it's see. Live. Um, so, and I, and I think people love that. People just want real, because a lot of times, and I think in the years past, blogs have just looked so beautiful and perfect, and they seem unattainable. But when you're doing it live and you make mistakes, I was doing a video with Mariah a week ago, and I was doing a wreath, and when I held up the finished product, like, it all fell over. You know, <laughs> like, whoa! <laughs> like, it's just real, and that's really what happens. And um, so I think people really like the authenticity of, of, of the blogger and a brand. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. Um, and that's definitely something that we're trying to move towards is that mm -hmm. simplicity. I think that we've always kind of yeah. been in that space, but really making people aware that, hey, you can really entertain in, you know, under 30 minutes. Like, you can throw yeah. together a party. It doesn't need to be Pinterest perfect. It doesn't need to be, you know, this done-up production. Mm -hmm. It can, you know, just take a few plates. Um, you know, we always say good food, good people, um, good party. So, that's kind of what we're looking to convey. Yeah, I mean, I'd say a couple of years ago, we were extremely aspirational. 
mm -hmm. um, particularly on the cut crystal line. And then we've made a conscious decision to say, you know what, Let, let's go with being attainable because more people are getting together, having smaller gatherings, a cocktail party. Um, a big trend we're seeing is, um, uh, what are those called? Where, where you go to one person's house for appetizers and another one. Oh, a progressive, progressive dinner. dinner. Yeah. yeah, progressive dinner. So we're seeing a lot of that and a lot of people staying in. So if you just have people over, you're not going to want some gigantic spread and have it look Martha Stewart ready. Um, <laughs> so we're going to just go more attainable. And I like the Pinterest fail site because I, you know, I do too. my stuff rarely looks like theirs, <laughs> but that's good if you can get it that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we had a question regarding social media. Um, would China be interested in partnering with bloggers to create videos for Facebook or YouTube? Um, I think that's something that we're definitely considering. Um, we've made a conscious effort to move towards video. Um, we do a lot of recipe videos um, that we share on Facebook. Um, but I do think that there would be value in, in looking at how can we use our, our blogger base to really amplify and really engage, as we were talking about earlier, um, our consumers. And um, I think to Mariah and Lindy's point, people want to see, um, you know, kind of that real time and engagement mm -hmm. um, and interaction. So it's something that we're d we would definitely be, uh, we'll be considering and looking at how can we um, utilize influencers to kind of bolster that. Yeah. So. And, I, and I would just add the caveat. I, um, if you have a connection with a retailer, that would be helpful as well. Um, because we've been asked to shoot some videos that have a retailer specific like a store brand salsa in our mm -hmm. recipe something like that yeah. so um we are looking at that and, and offering that up to specific retailers as well yes absolutely so and that's you know um we always talk about mutually beneficial um you know I think that's it's a great opportunity for influencers because you're not only partnering with us um, with the China brand, but you have the opportunity to partner with a major retailer. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, kind of a, a two for one, if mm -hmm. you will. <laughs> So I know that we are running over. Um, and I know we had some technical difficulties earlier, so that's you know kind of why we're we're over. Um, you know, we had a few more questions, but uh, you know we'll wrap it up because I know that everyone who's tuning in is busy and it's a Friday and almost lunchtime uh, for some people. So um, you know, I, I really just wanted to talk about kind of the trend in. Um, the trends coming in 2017, kind of those predictions. Um, I think that there's been a lot of talk. Uh, you know, with um, with how is the influencer market going to evolve? Um, you know, I think especially towards the end of this year, there's been a lot of hubbub um, with different um, networks and um, uh, you know ethics of disclosure. So um, I'm just curious, where uh, you know, Lindy and Mariah, what you guys think as influencers? Kind of, what are your predictions for 2017? Um, I think Lindy mentioned it earlier that we'll see um, a lot of brands looking for content to be on their own website um, and having um, influencers create content so that they can help bridge the gap between their retail partners um, and their brand and the consumer and the influencer. So you're going to see a lot of like cross promoting, I think. Um, I also think um, video is, it's here to stay. Um, and you're going to see a lot of people really trying to amp that up and um, utilize those tools um, to show people how to create authentic everyday moments. I think another thing that we kind of noticed in 2016 that I believe will carry through in 2017 is simplicity. I think for a while, especially when blogs first started, we tried to overdo everything and we wanted for our our birthday parties to look like um, they were, you know, done by Martha Stewart. But I think people are realizing that the connections with people are far more important than the things that you have. And so I think we're going to really see people hone in on simplifying things and um, creating relationships and moments that matter. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and then I also think, like Mariah said, you'll see content that um, – Oh my gosh, I just lost it. Ah. Um, we are live. This is another That's instance. Right. <laughs> I think, um, not only video, but I think live video is here to stay. And then I think, I, you guys, it was so good. <laughs> no, like it really was such a good point. I can't even remember. It's going to come. That's okay. I know. See, Mariah is so much better at this. <laughs>
<laughs> That's okay. Um, for any of you tuning in, if you guys have any predictions or thoughts, um, feel free to comment um, and we'll share. Um, but we'll wrap this up. Like I said, I know we're, that we're running over, but um, you know, if you guys have any other questions, uh, now's the time. Do we have any? Are we good? Good. Um, so, you know, thank you for joining us. Thank We're you. really excited about 2017 and, and how influencer relations can really um, help us move the needle on our end with our marketing efforts and sales. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope that you guys were able to take a little bit away from this, whether it was learning more about Chinet or influencers or, you know, kind of just some industry talk. Um, we hope that you were able to take something away from this. Um, you know, this is the second time doing it. Um, and, you know, it's each year it gets better and better. So <laughs> minus the technical difficulties. Right. Um, so we'll be sending out a brief survey um, for you guys to share your thoughts. Um, we'll be following up as well. Um, like I said, if you guys have any ideas or comments that you would like to share with us, um, we'll be providing contact information. So please send that our way for us to, to kind of open up that conversation. Um, yeah. Oh, so the ambassador program. Um, we don't have like an application for that. Um, but if you are interested, that's something that we can discuss for sure. And so. I would just like to say thank you for um, being brand advocates yes. for the China brand. I mean, it's something that's near and dear to um, our hearts as well. <laughs> but it, but it, it is great to see um, that everybody you know, really responds to the brand and, and in, in our world, in the disposable table world, we're the only people who are doing this. And so we're sort of changing um, the landscape in which we reach our consumers. And we're happy to be uh, part of that. And, and thank you for your interest in Chinette. Yeah. So um, it looks like we're good. Um, okay. Thank you again for joining us. Um, it's been fun. Um, yeah. And hopefully we'll be back next year. So uh, <laughs> Lindy and Mariah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Um, it's always a pleasure having you. Um, yeah, so have a great weekend and a great holiday season. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.